Hello and welcome to the Winning Agendas coverage of the Reddit Twilight Struggle League. Uh, my name is Jesse Marshall, I have stuffed up my setup there. Um, so this is a game uh, from, as I said, the Reddit Twilight Struggle League, which is slightly different to the last few videos I've been putting up from the International Twilight Struggle League. Um, that's a league with 100 players uh, divided into conferences and divisions across the world based on geographic location. There's 100 players in that league. Um, and each player is playing 20 matches. However, in this league, uh, it's divided into different divisions, and I'll just be playing a smaller number of games, I think around seven or eight games. Uh, so this is the first of those. Um, so we're playing as the USSR. This is random sides, uh, rather than assigned sides in the International Twilight Struggle League, um, and we've randomed the USSR. We've set up a pretty standard 4-4-1, um, not going into Yugoslavia, I generally prefer Austria, um, unless there's a particular reason to think about Greece. 4-3-3 um, three, three indicates probably a defector's headline, not going to headline decal. Uh, it's too valuable and too important to risk getting defectors. Um, haven't really got any other particularly impactful headlines, so we'll probably just headline Arab-Israeli war here. We also don't have a four to coup with. Um, so we'll probably coup Italy. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, Olympic Games is really the only other coup, but I think AI war is a nice one. All right, so that's pretty good. That gives us some um, respite in terms of scoring in the Middle East. Assuming that our opponent doesn't have Middle East scoring, although I think most players would headline Middle East scoring over CIA created as the US. Particularly on turn one. Okay, so they've kicked us out of Iraq, interestingly, um, protecting themselves from the Italy coup, importantly. So that, in many ways, makes up our mind for us. Um, in terms of where we're going to coup now. So we'll just coup Iran, probably with Warsaw Pact. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're not going to event Suez or Warsaw, they're free ops for us this turn, um, so it's kind of much of a muchness. Um, although, yeah, perhaps more likely to event Suez, well, I think less likely now that Israel's gone, but in any case, I think we're just happy to use Warsaw. Okay. So now they have a choice, either they coup us again, or uh, we coup them subsequently. They could go into Pakistan or Afghanistan here. Um, if they do, and don't degrade DEFCON, um, then I am probably going to coup again with Suez Crisis on the next AR. I know that gives us fewer uh, free ops to use to spread from our decal, uh, particularly into France. Um, but I still think it's important enough, depending on where they go from Iran, um, to both kick them out of the Middle East entirely, hopefully, but also, um, deprive of them of some access in this region. So if they go into just Afghanistan, then I think that it's probably still worth cooing Iran. But if they also go into Malaysia, then we may, that may... Um, tilt me towards playing decal. And if we do, when we do play decal this turn, it'll probably be um, one in Thailand, one in Burma, one in Angola, one in Algeria. So I assume that this will include some influence in Malaysia. Yeah, interesting doubling up in Panama. Um, so for two reasons that I mentioned, one is that they've, uh, one of which I mentioned, one the influence in Malaysia, but also the overprotecting of Iran. I think it's going to be better for us to do this this turn. It also threatens France. Um, Mm, 
query whether it's better to go into Lao than Burma. Just because it gives us domination. This AR. No, I think not, because I think they will fill up Thailand other way. Yep. Mm, perhaps not that they'll fill up Thailand other way, but I think it's quite likely they'll get another country in Asia, so I think it's much of a muchness, and the access to India is more important than having the country on this action round. Very reluctant to play the China card on turn one as the USSR. Um, and given that the US is likely to end up with at least one influence in Thailand here, it's going to make me far less likely to want to play NORAD. Okay, that worked out exceedingly well for us. Um, so we'll trigger AEU. And I think we'll take Thailand. Put one in France. We do want to get presence in the Middle East as well this turn, we need to remember. So we, one of our um, ops needs to go there. stage I think we can do this um, Just spreading to as many Asian battlegrounds as possible at this point. Um, I know we've still failed to take an Asian non-battleground, so that if they have Asia scoring, we're not maximising our potential uh, points and our pressure. Uh, but there's just so many important battlegrounds and so much access up for grabs at this point, and I think the chances of them having Asia scoring are pretty low considering their play pattern so far. Um, they really haven't prioritised it at all. Um, it doesn't... Nothing they've done indicates to me that they have any scoring cards whatsoever. They certainly don't have Middle East scoring, or they've done that already. Okay, three into Pakistan is very interesting. Uh, I think we'll use Suez Crisis to take France. And Burma. And we've got two more ARs. I think we'll take... We'll put influence in either India or South Korea, depending on what they do, and try and get one into Syria as well. Uh, dumping Warsaw earlier in the turn, and the fact that we played EU does make us a tiny bit vulnerable in Europe, but okay, they've dumped the Europe scoring. Interesting that they just let us have France before they did that. Um, but, uh, you know, they haven't allowed us to get domination there, I suppose. Um, so they view an intervention, which means they're not going to be holding anything. Uh, so we do need to get the one into the Middle East. Uh, I think we're happy to go into Lebanon rather than Syri rather than filling up Syria. Um 
And then we probably want to go into South Korea to threaten that as well. And then, yeah, I, I'm reasonably happy to fill up India, although because we don't know the location of IP war and we're already dominating in Asia, I'm kind of not overly desperate to do that. Okay. CNS. Um, and I think we'll just hold on to NORAD and just take the opportunity to keep taking countries at this point. Um, Let's see. I don't particularly want to take Egypt because NASA's out there. Um, but, you know, the Middle East is going to be scored, and although it is ops efficient to take these countries in Africa, we want to be focusing on getting BPs in Asia instead. Um, so let's go, I think, South Korea overprotects Thailand. And we can come back to Europe and getting domination there next turn because we have some time. Okay. So, Asia scoring, obviously a good one. Red Scare, good to have for the headline. Um, Korean War, good backup to have. Truman, this is a good opportunity for us to dump that while it only gets rid of our Finland influence. Uh, independent Reds does nothing. Special relationship, we can even break UK at this point, uh, which wouldn't be too bad to do with that. Um, yeah, so all in all, I think now that we know the defectors is out of the deck, oh, we can also just event Romanian after we um, play independent reds. So yeah, I think... Yeah, I think I'm happy to headline Red Scare. I mean, the other option is to headline Romanian, but I think they've probably got some decent ops here, given that our ops are so bad. Uh, and this, I mean, very off chance that, especially now that they've Marshall planned, that this will force them to... Um, blockade themselves. There's now two fours out of the deck, or three fours rather, with Red Scare, so there's just Nuclear Test Ban and NATO left. They could have both of them, or they could both be in that tiny turn three pile. But there's certainly a decent chance that they have one of them. But still forcing them to hold that and blockade that away if they have blockade is, is good. Um, okay, well... They've also, there's also a decent chance they've got IP war, so we need to be aware of that if we get too greedy on VPs in Asia. Um, and there's a decent chance they've got Middle East scoring. So, we want to get rid of Independent Reds ASAP. Um, so, I think that's probably our coup. Let's just get that done. Hopefully, roll a six. No. Nonetheless, I'm glad that's done. So both Suez and De Gaulle are still in the deck um, in terms of them going ahead and trying to take France. I mean, the other thing to remember is the USSR is particularly if we can score Asia for domination and somehow, despite that coup in Iran not being successful and our last one also not being good and our position being a little behind there. If they do have Middle East scoring here, 
if we can somehow manage to dominate, that'd be nice, but he's going to be a little bit challenging, given our ups, unless they somehow have Middle East scoring and give us NASA beforehand, but I think that's extraordinarily unlikely. Um, so, I think we're, um, it's almost best for us just to dump Asia scoring here, because they're going to fill up Afghanistan if we fill up South Korea, and it really just doesn't get us anywhere that's just neutral VP, so I think we just take the five. Um, because our ops just really aren't good enough to be fighting that. Um, they also didn't put one in the UK with um, Marshall plans, so we can break the UK with special relationship if we want to. Um, mm -mm. To not allow them to have the one in France. I think they do have Middle East scoring because they played that one into Iraq. So let's just take this, get that out of our hair. Yeah, our ops are just really too low to be fighting for more VPs in Asia, and I think we just want to spend our time um, denying them any domination in the Middle East this turn. They may just take the one VP. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. So now we've got a scoring cardless situation for the rest of the turn. So we'll just try and solidify our position in various places. So it is going to be hard for us to hold on to Europe domination, but I think um, maybe we do that later in the turn. Maybe we just event Romanian now. That seems feels really bad from a tempo perspective. Um, I don't mind just taking South Korea. Hmm. So they're coming further across the Middle East. Do they want Egypt? I'm not quite sure what they're playing at here. I think let's just make Europe a problem for them. So now, obviously it's much easier for them to take countries because they had Marshall Plan, so it's only one op per country for these four. And it's going to be very difficult for us to hold on to this domination. Um, but we might have the opportunity, if we're lucky, to somehow tempo them out. Okay, interested to see what their remaining cards are. They haven't had a particularly bad time for them um, in terms of ops, despite the fact that they're purged. I mean, obviously, denying them the opportunity to spread and take countries as rapidly as they otherwise would have has been helpful because it meant that they had to give up on the idea of dominating the Middle East entirely. Um, and it's also been good because we haven't had the best hand to try and cope with either. I think let's do this now and force them to just keep thinking about Europe. Hmm. 
Hmm. It's almost even tempting to put three in Canada with no route. I've never done that before, but the situation does almost lend itself to that. But I think spacing it is probably still better. I, I don't particularly want to trigger it here. I think it's just going to become really annoying in Asia. Um. Hmm, I wonder what they'll do here. Okay, they put the one in Canada. Fair enough, because now we're going to have to give them back the UK anyway with Truman. Um. Hmm. I mean, we can hold Truman, but I really don't want to risk fighting, actually having to fight about a battleground with it. I'd rather just give them back the, the non-battleground. Um, and put our influence somewhere else, move towards domination in the Middle East, probably. So, yeah. The one in Jordan gives us the access to Saudi Arabia that will be important um, if we're going to dominate in the Middle East next turn. I mean, we could have just taken Israel, I suppose. I could have put the one in Israel, that probably would have been better. Because that puts us four ops points away from domination. Um, but it does, this both denies them a country and allows us to put three into Saudi Arabia, which is one that they could otherwise take with three, and they need five to take Israel. Um, so, whilst it makes it more expensive for us to dominate, it actually makes it easier for us to hold on to domination, if that makes sense. In terms of the rest of the world situation, we definitely want to be moving into Zaire as well next turn. Okay. So they're trying to even up Asia. Fair enough. Uh, socialist government's not particularly useful. De Gaulle not useful at all. Korean War not useful. Um... So let's think socialist governments. Um, so they use test ban. We know they've got NATO. That means this turn. So they have at least one four up. We know they've got blockade. Um, and uh, what else? I think all the one ups are out. Can't think off the top of my head what else they must have here. Uh, Vietnam revolts, which we'll presumably get at the end of the turn. Um. <laughs> we could headline Korean War just for the VP. Uh, we could headline socialist governments. We could headline duck and cover to try and kill them randomly in case they headline Olympic Games, but that seems like a long shot. Um... Socialist governments allows us to remove two from Spain, which then allows us to take Spain. Um, and depending on what they've headlined, either one from Canada or one from Greece or Turkey. I think that's probably better than how... Oh, don't know, though. We do kind of want the ops to be able to fight in the other regions. Mm, but if they've headlined Europe scoring, it's going to be so tasty. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty reasonably happy to event Korean War later in the turn. Oh, damn. Okay. Well, I had the scoring card headline read, but just the wrong one. It's okay. Well, there's nothing that we could have done about that in the headline phase anyway. Um, 
I don't really want to give them the duck and cover um, victory points. So I think I'm going to space duck and cover this turn and play the rest. Uh, so now that Asia scoring's out, we don't need to worry so much about fighting that. Um, okay, so instead let's take this. Our efforts are made in the belief that men and nations can cooperate and that there are no international problems which men of goodwill cannot solve or uh, adjust. Yeah, we do want to take that, I think. Um, but... I think we want to go... Hmm, actually. Sorry to keep playing this extremely long headline phase over and over again. But I think the right way to do it is actually to go one, two, three, so we're dominating the Middle East. And it's really unlikely that they're going to play into Spain still because that's really what we want to do. We want to make sure that this is a country that's easy for us to get. Um, so that even if they go, you know, one in Greece, one in Canada, we can go one in Spain, still be ahead. They go one in Turkey, we can go, you know, two in Yugoslavia, and then we're actually ahead of the game in Europe, um, despite the fact that they had Marshall Plan, which is pretty great position to be in. So it just shows the importance of, I mean, that's why that socialist governments to take back one of the Mediterranean countries can actually make a real difference in terms of the maths in Europe, non-battleground countries and Europe country count overall. Hmm. That was uh, an incredible oversight. Not thinking of cooing on AR1. I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we all make mistakes, I suppose. Um, now I think is the time to... I think I got confused myself with my thinking about duck and cover. Um, we don't want to EU, because uh, that undermines the whole point of what we've been doing. But we don't really want to know, Rad. I think the fact that they cooed the Middle East rather than cooing... Um, Africa probably does tend to indicate to me more that they do have Middle East scoring, uh, but we can, now can't dominate them anyway because they were successful in their coup. Um, so I think the best way to approach it is probably to... We do need to play NORAD this turn, so we might as well do that and take Saudi Arabia. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, we're now going to need to play Korean War, in it, which we were going to do anyway to get these mill ops. That was uh, the quite the error of AR. And not of the impersonal natural forces. Turned out that we just gave them a nice coup target. But still, the Europe logic holds, I think, so it's not all lost. So there's that NATO that we knew about. Okay, so they do play into Spain. Interesting. Um, and for that reason, I think we will play into Greece. Oh, that does just not work with the math quite so well, does it? Yeah, especially since we're going to lose Eastern European influence by doing that. Oh dear, this has gone very poorly. Let's just space... Duck and cover. Okay. <laughs> so I think we can hold five year plan. 
Not that there are really any bad scoring cards for us at the moment, other than Central America scoring doesn't look ideal. Uh, so they're going to give us Vietnam Revolts on the last AR. So we won't have a chance to leverage that into Lao. Okay. So it looks like they do have Middle East scoring, but... Um, unless they really want to dominate us there, we don't, I think, need to respond to that immediately. Let's just do this. Take the VPs and the Milops. So despite fluffing that a little bit, um, I think we're still in a decent position. And when I say fluffing that a little bit, I think we fluffed it quite a lot. Um, because we did have the read that they had Middle East scoring. It's not the best. Um, so we'll trigger the Eastern European unrest for the second time in the early war. Undo all the good work that Comic Con did for us. And I think we'll just overprotect East Germany again after this because we don't want, even though Warsaw Pact is still out there, we don't want to be fighting for that. So one, two, three, and then we've got a three as well for our last AR. Um, from containment. It is a little risky to hold on to five year plan. Um, and now that I'm thinking more about it, we may just five year plan the containment to be honest, because I don't, don't want to just randomly lose. Even though CIA's out of the deck, what could we get in the mid-war? Okay, UN intervention again on the blockade. That's a bit annoying. Okay, so they're really defending that position. Um, I think maybe we'll go Botswana and... Allow for the victory point, actually. So it's unfortunate as well that we drew five-year plan in a hand where all the blue cards we had were threes, so we couldn't even get value out of it um, in terms of discarding a, a blue card that was worth fewer ops. But that is okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's gone reasonably well. Like, they, in terms of the cards they drew, they were able to manage things reasonably effectively with two UN interventions and um, drawing a fair chunk of blue cards and none of the really damaging red cards. And also, all of the fours except for Red Scare, so four out of five fours. So pretty good early war, I think, for the US, but we've um, getting decol on turn one allowed us to score Asia for domination once, which has given us the bulk of our VPs. Um, and being able to also use the decol to get into France allowed us to deny them any Europe domination scores despite a Marshall plan. So I don't terribly mind the situation that we're in, it is frustrating and probably uh, was an oversight not to play into Lao earlier um, to give ourselves, to, which allowed them to do the deny Asia domination on AR6 and then headline Asia scoring on turn three for um, fewer VPs, but that's okay. Okay. So they take India. So we got Red Scare again. Um, D style is still in the deck, unfortunately, so we can't salt for D style. Uh, it's one of those unfortunate situations where it not being held until turn three actually works out worse for you uh, as the Soviet player. The best thing we can do, I think, is to um, randomly blockade them with no access, so we can red scare in the headline phase, um, assuming that we don't get defectors, of course, 
we can then salt for blockade and blockade them, which isn't too bad considering we have a pretty rough hand to deal with otherwise. Like reasonably low ups and, and not a lot of impact. I think try going for the uh, West Germany ploy might be okay. I think red scaring them is probably the way to go anyway. So Middle East scoring is out of the way. Um, The problem with salt is that it does allow those coups on um, on our African battlegrounds, which I don't love. Uh, okay, cool. So we'll get rid of colonial rearguards or puppet governments. I think uh, one we're going to get rid of one and space the other. I think so. It's not a huge issue. Um, So they get a coup somewhere in Africa. Hopefully it's a one-op coup on Angola that only puts one influence there so we can take it back with South African unrest. That'd be nice. Or a failed coup, I guess that works as well. So they got the no red. Okay, so it looks like they may have Southeast Asia scoring here. Which is still a neat couple of VPs for us. So maybe we um, actually go for the blockade earlier in the turn rather than later here. Uh, Because then if they coup, we get to coup back with higher ops, presumably, um, given that they're red scared. And then we get to blockade them. Yeah, I don't mind that. I mean, perhaps it's better to hold on to um, sort negotiations in case they do have D style or something that they're desperate to space this turn, but. Hmm. That's intriguing. Well, I think we just go for it. I hope they don't have We Will Bury You or something like that. Since we had US Japan and um, Red Scare, they played Test Ban on turn two. They did, so they could have Test Ban. Test Ban, we were very off our power. Okay, we did not have it. So presumably this is a coup in Africa.
Well, I think we'll just take West Germany. Uh, do we do that or do we go? I think that may be better. And we've now got special relationship free as well, which is just a little bonus. And if we don't degrade DEFCON here, we get to coup Italy next turn, which is kind of cool as well. got the ops advantage, we might as well f drive home our European domination as well as taking Greece is doubly important because if we are to successfully coup Italy next turn... I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal of, of landing a man... Uh, I was going to say it's important to protect against brush war, but it seems not. Uh, so I'll take Greece and then we've got to remember to get some mill ops actually. So I think we probably want to coup, just coup Algeria back. Uh, I'm going to take Greece first. Uh, don't really want to hold over colonial regards, but I think we have to. Um, So we're going to rest a very good event to be using for something like that. Let's coup first. Nice. Even though we were salted, we managed to roll very well. We deny ourselves the Italy coup by doing that, but we just couldn't afford to give up four VPs to Millops. Just get to coup that back. They're getting the a red in right. France, I guess. Not peace at the expense of freedom. It's a bit of a bummer. And freedom. Here in this hemisphere. Did forget about that. And we hope around the world, God willing, that goal will be achieved. Hmm. Okay, that worked out well. So no Southeast Asia scoring for them that turn. Okay, not a bad hand. We're not gonna get too excited though, um, because we need to um, manage France, which may mean that I'm more minded to head line loan gunman than I otherwise would be, just to put the one back in there. And it gives us the same information as the Cambridge Five, which is my other headline. Um, and if it gets defectors, then it gets shuffled back in, which is a good outcome anyway. Um, it's also worth one fewer op in our actual turn than the Cambridge Five. So I think it's probably better, especially since the access we get from Cambridge Five, we can get from D cell later in the turn anyway. So let's just do that. Okay. So no scoring cards, but they have Hunter and OAS, which is relevant. So that's also relevant to an extent. It can deprive us of a VP from OPEC, but OPEC's really their only problematic card in hand anyway. So not really many sources of VPs for us this turn, so we are going to have to hold on, but that's okay. 
um, and no sources of milops for them if we could. Cool. Um, so I think we'll repair France and coup Libya probably. Or do we want to coup now and then, yeah, I think because of NORAD. very lucky. Um, now we can go like that to give ourselves the extra OPEC point. Um, and then if they want to um, OAS now, we can... Okay, Camp David Accords, fair enough. And they've got Sadat as well, so... We'll just let them have it, which means I think we'll just destalinize those two anyway. Because we're going to lose them. The one from... One from South Korea we can afford to lose, and one from Vietnam. And we'll go... Since we have uh, decol as well, we'll go one, and we have Fidel. So we go two, three, four. They've got OAS, but we have a reasonable amount of free ops, so it's not not always lost. Um, if they space OPEC, we may. Oh, they can space Cultural Revolution as well. I was going to say we could play the China card. Uh, just to try and get them to have to give it back to us. But I think that's probably still worth it to make them Space Cultural Revolution. Forego those ops. Cool, that worked out well. Uh, yeah, so I think we will play the China card here. Mm, what are we going to Uruguay? Maybe we're going to Uruguay. What's their hand again? I'm just trying to think whether they have enough good coup cards. So they've got really only two ops coup cards, unless they want to give us OPEC. Um, or give us back the China card. So I think that's good. One, two, three, four. Um, oh, South America scored. No, let's go. Oh, no, I think that's still good. So we're threatening the rear line. We know they don't have Voice of America. We know they don't have Central America scoring, but I think threatening that rear line is good. So we're not getting the opportunity to uh, realign ourselves, but I think we're reasonably happy for them to keep taking these realignments at zero. I don't really want to play into Colombia. I mean, that the other option there is to go one Venezuela, one Colombia. But if they then coup Colombia, we have to realign Brazil um, and have to succeed. Otherwise, 
they get the favourable reline on Venezuela. So I don't love that. Plus it gives them the mill up from the coup. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Do they give us three VPs from OPEC or do they space it here? So cooing Uruguay, I assume. Yeah. Ah, it's unfortunate. I mean, like we had to do that. It gives the it gives us a more favorable um, role than if we go into Colombia. But what can you do? Uh, so we'll take this. Is there a better place for us to put that other influence than Chile, I wonder? Probably France. At this point, um, although I am a little worried about JP in Poland. But Warsaw is still in the deck. So good that we had D style this turn to combat their South America access, even though South America has been scored with this kind of VP lead um, and our board state elsewhere. It is good not to let them just completely destroy us in one region. Um, and having Fidel later this turn is going to be nice as well, I think. Okay, so they're giving us the coup on Colombia now. Interesting. Don't, don't desperately want to give them the VPs from Nixon. But I also don't want to lose Venezuela here, so... And I think we want to event Fidel, because it's going to be worth at least two VPs. Um, Decol is going to get us Nigeria, deny Indonesia, break Malaysia, probably, uh, which is a couple of VPs, so I think Kuhn with Nixon's okay. Even though I do hate giving up two VPs like that. They've now got Cultural Revolution, OPEC, which presumably they're going to hold, one of the two, um, and Sadat, is that right? Yeah. So they'll probably coup Colombia with Sadat, I'd say. No spacing OPEC, okay. So I think we can just headline decal next turn. So let's, um, or we can headline Fidel. Hmm. I think I want Fidel more than I'm desperate for decal at the moment though. So I think maybe let's just play Fidel. And then um, we can headline decal and if we get defectors then so be it. Yeah, so space and culture of as well. Okay, so now they can't space any twos, which is relevant. Um, cool. So we've got Liberation Theology too, which lets us take three non-battlegrounds in Central America, not irrelevant. Um, or we can try and control Central America by cooing Panama this turn, which is not out of the question. Uh, unfortunate that they've got... Um, oh, they can still do twos because they failed on one of their space races. Okay. Uh, so did they already place it out? Maybe they held one small step. Let's have a look. Oh no, they could with one small step. Okay, so they did hold set up. Uh, so we've got Voice of America and Grand Sales and Colonial Rear Cards to deal with. So not the best now that we've got no China card. Um, so we're, we're actually going to have to eat something bad this turn. Ooh. Hmm. 
They may get a double NORAD, but I don't think that's too bad here. We don't really want to miss land B and just die. And so, my fellow Americans, um, ask not what your country can do for you. So I think the headline decal plan is fine. You can do for your country. Okay. Presumably that's going to be North Korea and something else. Okay. Um... I'm reasonably happy to missile envy here. If we hit, we will bury you. That's okay. If we hit flower power, that's okay. If we hit test ban, it's actually alright as well, I think. Hmm. A lot of the wars are out of the deck, so if we hit flower power, it's a bit annoying, but it does deprive them of a four up. Test ban improves DEFCON, but then that makes grain sales a lot less of a problem. But then we need to play ABM Treaty before grain sales in, because we don't want to give them that. Um, I don't really want to give them Voice of America, but it means we can, if we do grand sales and don't, if, oh, we, we can hold one if we don't grand sale ourselves. Grand selling ourselves is pretty bad. Um, So missile envy, flower power is probably the worst outcome, but denies them the best card and forces them to coup with missile envy. I actually think it's okay. We will bury you will be okay because I don't mind having the um, VPs at this point, especially since we're going to arms race as well, hopefully later in the turn, because our ABM will hopefully beat whatever they coup with. We do need to be careful now as well, though, of Thailand with no red. That's the complicating factor. Asia is getting a little bit concerning. Okay, so if 
Perhaps we don't ABM this turn and we just take this given no rad. We know that they can't coup unless they remove out of Turkey, so we can just coup Uruguay um, at some point for Milops uh, with defectors, and then we can score arms race. So maybe they do have the Southeast Asia scoring card this turn, which is fine. So let's just go ahead and do the plan. So we get Millops, we get Arms Race, we get Liberation Theology, we get Grain Sales, and then we have to give them Colonial Rear Guards. <laughs> we get Grain Sales Space, um, and then we have to give them Colonial Rear Guards, or Voice of America. Okay. Uh, it's unfortunate. Um. Just take that. The end of this turn is going to be exceedingly painful. Hmm. Maybe we actually. I'm one in Panama. Just for the domination. Yeah, triggering rear guards might not be the end of the world here. Our goal is not the victory of might, but the vindication of right. Not peace at the expense of freedom, but both peace and freedom here in this hemisphere. And we hope around the world, God willing, that goal will be achieved. Mm. Our rockets are just not particularly effective, are they? Um, so Asia, safe to say, has gone reasonably poorly, but, you know, that's, I guess, to be expected when you fork over the China card um, to use elsewhere other than Asia. And then the Usuri this turn was quite effective. NORAD's been a little bit of a pain, so we haven't hit the Quagmire to get rid of it yet, but it's okay. And I guess we had both Salt and um, ABM as opportunities for multiple NORADs in a single turn. The Salt one which eventuated, the NORAD one, uh, sorry, the ABM one which didn't because we elected not to trigger its event. Okay. That's good, that gives us back our domination. And then we'll give them the rear guards. Africa. So presumably it's one Nigeria, one Angola. Maybe one Cameroon and one Saharan states as well. Would be a little annoying. 
but I think then I'd just play back into Nigeria and Angola, um, even though it gives them the realign opportunity. And in terms of the missile envy play, I think that did work out okay in the end, even though we lost um, a little bit of tempo because of it. It worked out well with the arms race um, and forcing them to use a two up the following AR also damaged their tempo a little bit. Anyway, I think it's, it's sort of much of a muchness. The other option was to use the um, ABM just to clean up. But, um, okay. So we'll go back into the one ops, uh, the one stability battlegrounds rather, and then we'll deal with the others later. They could have a three up to flip Algeria, which would be a little bit annoying. Okay. Cool. This should be okay. So we get to AR1 Africa scoring, assuming that no, nothing else occurs. Um, just headline this for an extra VP. Down comes Sadat. And then that's the game. So thanks for watching. Um, managed to hold on through what was a little bit more of a tumultuous mid-war than we may have anticipated in terms of where we were able to force the issue. Um, the scoring cards, I think, came out um, at times that were not always ideal for us. I um, mean, Central America was going to get scored that turn and it was going to be an uphill battle for our opponent to fight back there. Um, Europe, we had to wait to cash that in, but I think had it come out on turn three, I don't think we were in such a good position there um, to deal with that. So uh, the fact that it waited until turn six when we'd really had a chance to execute our blockade manoeuvre um, meant that we got a better return on our VPs there. All in all, Africa was very fortunate for us that our opponent was forced to score that when they had no presence and then we were able to get them again with no presence there on turn seven. I think that was really, really good. Um, Asia, we got to get that early domination in and then it was tucked away early on in the, even though our opponent got to score it for even, um, the fact that we didn't have to worry about Asia and could just focus our attention elsewhere in the world after that, um, yeah, meant that I think we had a pretty smooth game as far as USSR games go. Had a bit of a rough ride there with some of the aggressive plays deciding to hold on to Voice of America, to hold on to Colonial Rear Guards um, and not, and play a lot of our cards perhaps more aggressively than we otherwise could have. Getting rid of the puppet governments when we had a little bit of a build-up of some bad cards um, at the start of turn four. Uh, being able to get rid of that to the bear trap was actually quite useful. Um, and obviously getting two red scares is always, or two purges, I should say, um, is always a good thing to have. So that evened out, I think, even though our opponent had the lion's share of the four-up cards, if the only real four-up card that you get is um, Red Scare Purge, then you're in pretty good shape um, because it is undoubtedly the most powerful and the most impactful in terms of what it's able to do, despite the fact that our opponent was able to marshal plan Europe. We were able to score it for domination once, and I think for plus one VP, at least, um, on, on turn one as well. All in all, hope you enjoyed the game, um, and I'll see you for the next game from either the International Twilight Struggle League or the Reddit League. Um, thanks so much for watching. I've been Jesse Marshall for The Winning Agenda.